Come on, don't stop, don't stop, don't stop, don't stop. Don't stop. Yeah. My, my, my. Don't, don't. the holy name of Jesus. Bless the holy name of Jesus. That's the reason to shout right there. Wipe your eyes. Don't cry. He's not dead. Hallelujah. 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 Man, if that song that doesn't touch your heart, you truly need Jesus. Amen. Somebody. Amen, 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 and amen. Gracious God, our Heavenly Father, we're so grateful, so thankful for this another day. We bless you, Lord. We thank you for life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness in Christ Jesus. God, we give you praise and glory for giving us the opportunity to come to your house to worship and to praise your holy name. We thank you, Lord God, for looking beyond our faults and still meeting every one of our needs. We give you praise and glory, God, for just being so good to us. Thank you for touching our bodies and thank you, Lord, for touching our minds and thank you for encamping angels around our doorsteps and 
watching over us as we made our way to your house. And God, you've just been so good to us. And we've just got to say thank you one more time. If it had not been for you, God, who was on our side, tell me where would we be? So we ask now, Lord God, that we turn our attention to your word. Bless us in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Would you give God just a big hand of praise for being God? I have an unusual message for us today. And uh, I want you to pay close attention to this word because this is one of the few times in the word where God calls somebody a fool. And it would do us well to see the circumstances surrounding why Jesus said God called a man a fool. Found in the book of Luke chapter 12, verses 16 through 21. Luke chapter 12, verses 16 through 21. Now, it really doesn't matter about all of the other things we do. If we miss this lesson, all of the rest of what we do falls short in terms of giving God praise, glory, and honor. Luke chapter 12, verse 16. Read if you have it, say amen. amen. Let's begin reading now. Seventeen. Eighteen. Verse 20. <laughs> and finally, 21. Praise the Lord. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I want to speak from the subject this morning. Lessons I've learned from a fool. Lessons I've learned from a fool. You can learn lessons from a fool if you just pay attention. Uh, there are some interesting things that we shall find in this text before us today. <coughs> Excuse me. And I am grateful for your prayers and support, uh, certainly as uh, we are making our way through this uh, flu or whatever this was that uh, we've been dealing with. But we bless God for your prayers and your support. Uh, Verse 16 of this 12th chapter of Luke, Jesus is speaking, and he's speaking to his disciples, and he's sharing with them a parable. And a parable, of course, is an earthly story with a heavenly meaning. And he's saying, uh, the ground of a certain rich man brought forth plentifully. Now, when he said a certain rich man, Whenever in scripture it says a certain man or a certain woman or a certain town, it means that this account is true. It's a parable, but it is a true account. He does not speak the man's name because he's not trying to highlight the person, but rather to spotlight the principle. 
And one of the problems that we have is when we highlight the persons too much, we many times miss the principle that Jesus is trying to share with us. And so we must understand that he says it in this vein so that we will get the principle. Verse 17 says, and he thought within himself, uh, what, 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 now keep, keep all this in mind now. He, he's not talking to everybody or anybody but himself. Uh, the first verse, 16 verse, tells us that this man was a very hardworking man. He was uh, ingenious and he was industrious and he was seriously successful in his time. And all that he did happened because of how this man put all of his energy, all of his time, all of his efforts in growing and expanding and increasing and getting more. So he thought within himself, uh, what, 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 what is the thought that he's saying in verse 17? What shall I do? Now let me throw some things out at you right quick. And I need you to keep this in mind about him first of all. One, he's selfish. Two, he's self-centered. And three, he's self-serving. Selfish, self-centered, and self-serving. All of this is about him. Just about him. Jesus is telling this story, and Jesus, if anybody knows how his heart is, his character is, his life is, Jesus does. He says, what shall I do? Because I have no room where to bestow my fruit. Verse 18 says, and he said, this will I do. I will pull down my barns and build greater, not larger. Notice the word here, greater. And there, when he pulls down those smaller and build the greater, he says, and there will I bestow all my fruits and my goods. All right, now, keep in mind now, he has expanded from just his fruits from verse 17. Now it's fruits and goods. Why? Because now, as his desire to increase and get larger and more, he's pulling in all of the wealth that he has, and he's making the storage not simply larger, but greater to be able to accommodate not only the fruit, but the riches that he has also accumulated and amassed. And so he says this. Now, what's interesting is when he talks about uh, storing all of these things there, he then has a continued conversation in his mind. He says uh, to himself again, and now speaks to his soul, he says, Listen, thou hast much goods laid up for how long? Many years. You won't talk about got some stuff put away for a rainy day. This man is like, we got it. We good. We're good. And look at what he tells his soul to do. Four things. One, take thine ease. Take thine ease. Two, Eat, three, drink, and four, be merry. Take thine ease, eat, drink, and be merry. Now, this is what he's telling his soul to do now, all right? This is this part that's most like God he's telling to do. Now, he says this to his soul because 
He does not have a relationship, nor does he have a fellowship with God. The closest thing to God is his soul. And when he says this, he's not talking to God. He's talking to his soul, that part that is eternal on the inside of him. He's talking about that part that was made in the image of God and in God's likeness. And he's speaking to his soul, not to the Father, not to the Son, not to the Spirit of God, but to his soul. And then verse 20, God interrupts his thought. Because when I first read that, I used to say he was talking to himself, but he wasn't saying nothing. He was so selfish, he didn't want nobody else to hear what he was saying. His plans were of such a nature that he didn't want even what he thought for future plans to be revealed to anybody else. And then verse 20 says, but God. But God said unto him. Now, he didn't say anything to God. And what this tells me is, listen, God has the ability to interrupt our thoughts, our conversation, our plans, and our dealings when we leave God out of the matter. God has the ability to step in a situation where he's not even invited at and show you that he's God all by himself. And whatever you think you're going to do is going to have to be at the bequest of God, at the behest of God. It's going to have to be at the power of God. And when you leave God out of your plans, when you leave God out of your thoughts, when you leave God out of your blessings and your dealings, you still going to have to deal with God. But God said unto him, thou fool, thou fool, thou fool, this night, now listen, all that God is speaking about is in reference to what he's already said. He's just told his soul, take thine ease, eat, drink, and be merry. Why? Because thou has much goods laid up for many what? Many years. And God interrupts his thought and says, thou fool, this night, not tomorrow morning, not next week, not at the end of the year, but this night. Thy soul shall be required of thee. Then God asks a question. Then whose shall those things be? Listen to this. Which thou, not me, which thou has prepared, provided, laid up, stored, who, who shall those things be? And one of the things I want you to know, my brothers and sisters, we might be able to amass it. We may be able to accumulate it. But when God calls us home, we can't take none of that with us. None of that God calls him a fool because he's made all this preparation. And I want you to see some things that stuck out to me and God impressed upon my heart to share with the people of God this simple word. Lesson number one, I learned that when this man who was blessed bountifully, whose land produced plentifully, who said, I've got so much I don't have room to store it. What shall I do? I know what I'll do. He didn't ask God. He asked himself. He said, I will pull down my barns and build greater. And there will I bestow all 
my fruits and my good. Where, where is God? So first, first lesson I, I, I learned was that a fool don't know how to say thank you for the little things or the large things. When you don't know how to say thank you to God for the little things, and when you don't know how to say thank you to God for the larger things, what you're saying to God is, God, I don't need you. I've done this all by myself. And what a fool he was because the ground he tilled was God's. The sweat he used was God's. The breath he breathed was God's. The strength he had was God. And I could keep walking on through everything he utilized to get what he had, and it all belonged to God, and not one time does he reference God in any manner less known to say thank you. My brothers and sisters, we've got to learn how to tell the Lord thank you for the little things and thank you for the things, listen, that may not be all that we want at this point, but what he has blessed us with is got us at a point right now where we are blessed because we do have them and God is still in the blessing business. And if he blessed you with a little, how much many of you know he can bless you with a little more and a little more and a little more and if you keep saying thank you, he'll keep opening up the doors for more. He'll keep giving you strength. He'll keep giving you the ingenuity to learn how to get more strength to be able to do more. But it all comes with you being thankful. He did not say thank you for the little things or for the great things. Second thing I want to share with you that I learned about this fool was that he, he didn't know not only to be thankful to God, but to pay his tithes or to give his offering or to set aside a portion of his prosperity and honor God with it. There is no place in these verses where he honored God in his giving. Listen to me well. He was a rich man. His ground brought forth plentifully. His increase kept on coming. And no place does he say thank you to God. And no place does he give a tithe an offering, or has he purposed in his heart to bless the kingdom of God or anybody else for that matter with his riches? It was all for himself. It was all because he was self-centered. It was all because it was to be self-serving. No one else. So take thine ease. Man, sit back. Who you've done a lot. Look at all you've done. Look at all you've got. Ain't nobody did this but you. Ain't nobody else got no reason to take no glory from this. But you, you did this. Take your ease. As a matter of fact, why are you easing? Go and eat you a little something. And then go on and drink you something. And when you get through drinking you something, go and have a party. Hey. Whoo, this is my stuff. All oh, this is my stuff. Look at what I have done. My, 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 my. And yet, he doesn't offer God a cent. And then, my brothers and sisters, third thing is, 
First, he didn't thank God for his blessings, small or great. Secondly, he didn't tithe, give God anything, not even an offering, less known, purposing to be a blessing out of the prosperity God blessed him with. But thirdly, and probably the most important thing was, he didn't trust God with his soul, his substance, or his surplus. Let me say that again. He did not trust God with his soul. That part that's like God, he didn't even trust God with his soul. He didn't trust God with the substance that God blessed him to have. Because he didn't acknowledge God as being the one who gave it to him. He think he did it on his own. And then if he did that on his own, then the surplus, the extra, the lad yap, the more came as a result of his continual hard work. And he didn't trust God with his soul. He didn't trust God with his substance, riches. And he didn't trust God with his overage, his surplus, his lanyap, his extra. None of that did he trust God with. And my brothers and sisters, I've learned that if you can't trust God with your soul, what can you trust him with? Jesus said, what does it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall he give in exchange for his soul? His soul. All of the stuff that this man had accumulated could not equal his soul. And he didn't even trust God with his soul. That's a fool. That is a fool. But I got news for you. Before it got to number three, it got to number one. And I want to tell somebody in here today, if you don't learn how to be thankful to God for the little things, if you don't learn how to say, God, thank you for the air I breathe. Thank you for waking me up. Thank you for health and strength. Thank you for opening the door. Thank you for doing this. Thank you. If you don't learn how to say thank you for these things, how will you learn to thank him for the great big old things? God loves to hear thank you every day, all day. Why? Because he keeps on blessing us every day, all day long. And he's worthy to be thanked and praised. Matter of fact, you ought to just get in the attitude of thanksgiving. In everything the Bible says, give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning who? Concerning you. In other words, every time God does something good for you, guess what God is expecting? He's expecting a thank you. He's expecting a glory. He, he's expecting a hallelujah. He's expecting, oh, bless his holy name. He's expecting some acknowledgement of his goodness to you. It doesn't matter how many other folk around you don't tell him thank you. We're talking about what he's done for you. Mm. Se sec secondly, you, you got to realize I don't care how much you have, part of that belongs to God. He had more than he could spend laid up for many years. 
many years. And yet he doesn't offer God one single dime. He doesn't say, God, thank you for the sunshine. Thank you for the rain. Thank you for the rich soil. Thank you for the seeds I've sown. Thank you. He doesn't say, thank you, Lord, for anything and give God tithe, offering, gifts, nothing. And it all belongs to God. I just want to tell somebody because I don't want God to call you a fool. Don't get in the habit of being blessed and not blessing God. You see, because listen, the little bit you got now, listen, God's got so much more waiting for you. But here's what God knows. If you're not faithful in a little, you're not going to be faithful in much. You, you won't pay your tithes off, you know, $100. You round that prayer, Lord, let me win that $1.3 billion in there, Jesus. I promise you I'll tithe, I'll give to the church, I'll help the... Now, God's like that. You don't even pay your tithe off the little money you make on your job. What, do you think God is stupid? All God has to do is look at your record and see from your record you're not a giver. You're not a giver. God is a giver. And when you love somebody, you all the more so give them. John 3, 16, for God so loved that he, okay, he's a giver. You love the Lord, but you won't give him nothing. You shout and you shout on credit. And then don't pay your bills. To God. Something's wrong with that picture. God wants you to recognize you owe him. You owe him. Every time he blesses you with something, you owe him. You need to learn how to say, God, thank you for my portion, but here's yours. I know it's not a whole lot, but this is what I got. And from this, I'm going to give you the best I can. And, and when you start learning how to do that, before you know it, he's going to start adding more and more and more and more. And, and before you know it, you will just get in the habit of blessing God or oh, bless his holy name because he knows then that you've learned the principle. But then when you trust him with your soul, there is nothing else, listen to me well, and I'm closing. There is nothing else that you won't trust God with when you trust him with your soul. Your substance can't even compete with your soul. And your surplus can't complete, compete with your substance. And God wants you to know all of them comes from him. All of them comes from him. So, so, so when you, you know, trying to make plans for growth and development and increase, enlarge my territory, for what? You ain't doing nothing with the territory you got now. Enlarge my territory. Increase, increase, increase. It, for what? Is God going to get an increase when you get an increase? No, or do you want that for a bigger car, a bigger house, a bigger diamond? Ain't nothing wrong with all of that stuff. Ain't not a problem in the world. Let me show you what this last verse says. 21. So is he. That's where we come in the picture. Now, God's already called the man a fool. The question is, do you qualify? Do you qualify? Listen to what he says. 
so is he that layeth up treasures for himself and is not rich toward God. God doesn't have a problem with you laying up treasures for yourself. But he has a problem with you laying up treasures for yourself and you're not rich toward him. It's you saying, God, I'm putting all this away. I want to make sure I'm doing good and well for retirement. I've got all this laid aside, and I've got more than I'll need. And I'll be able to have uh, more to pass on to my children and my children's children. And, all. and God don't want no, he don't have no problem with that. God don't want you to be broken, beggar, and don't have. He wants you to have all of that. But by the same token, he wants you to be rich toward him. How then do I become rich toward God? Well, let's look at what the fool didn't do. He didn't thank God. He didn't praise God. He didn't have a relationship with God. He didn't have fellowship with God. He didn't even mention God. And my brothers and sisters, when your day is filled with all that you have to do and God is not mentioned, check yourself. Check yourself. Because he said to himself, he thought within him, Self. He did everything he did for himself. And God was not in the picture. Secondly, my brothers and sisters, again, he didn't feel like God deserved any of his blessings. Nobody did. No one but him. He doesn't even mention his family. He doesn't even mention his friends. He doesn't mention those who are less fortunate than him. Nobody but him. Hmm. And so because of that, God sees him for what he is. A fool. Don't be a fool. Don't be a fool. Listen, everything God has given you, he's given for you to enjoy. God takes pleasure in blessing his people. God wants you to be blessed. God wants you to have. God doesn't have a problem with that. But God also wants it to be mutual reciprocal he wants you to give back he wants you to do listen rich toward him one in your time the fool was not rich toward God in his time two the fool was not rich toward God in his treasures he was not rich toward God with all of his treasures. And then thirdly, he was not rich toward God with his talents, his abilities to do. He was, he was, he was ingenious. He was industrious. I mean, he thought within himself and he, he, he devised the plan not only to grow and to multiply and to increase, I mean, exponentially, and then how to prepare and to store so that all of that would be kept and all the rest of this. And yet, in the midst of all of that, he didn't give no thought to how he could bless God. How he could bless God. How he could bless the will of God. As a matter of fact, 
you know, the word of God tells us God gives us wealth. But he gives us wealth for a particular purpose. That we might establish his kingdom. God giveth us wealth so that we might establish his kingdom. My question to you today is, are you establishing the kingdom of God with the wealth that you do have? I've shared with you many times before, if you really want to see if you're a fool or not, check your checkbook. Check your giving toward God. Check your gifts. We just got through with Christmas. Check your gifts toward God. We're talking about everything that has to do with giving to God, supporting the work of God, feeding the sick, uh, I mean, uh, feeding the hungry, uh, helping the minister to the sick, visiting those in prison, doing all, all of that is what is rich toward God. Using your abilities to help and to do the things that brings God glory and the people of God the most. What are you doing? To be rich toward God. Today is Martin Luther King's birthday. Tomorrow we're going to honor him. Many of you have off. What service are you going to render? What service are you going to attend? How are you going to pray and ask God to make you more servant-like? What are you going to do to be a better example for the kingdom of Christ. What are you going to do to help somebody less fortunate than yourself? See, all of that is what's rich toward God. It's not just money. And when you learn that God considers he or she who simply looks out for themselves, a fool who do not show God the glory, the good, the honor that God, the gratitude that God deserves, then God calls you a fool. And my brothers and sisters, if I were you today, I'd try and take down some of these notes from a fool. <laughs> and the reason I know what God said about this fool, he says about us, is because verse 21 says in the first three words, so is he. That means God is no respecter of persons. That man was there as an example. The question is, what are you? What are you? And I'll tell you this. If you don't change some of the ways that you have, even now after hearing this word, I promise you, heaven will record your name and behind your name will be four letters heads are bowed eyes are closed gracious God our heavenly father thank you Lord God for sharing with us lessons learned from a fool that we might not be foolish. You have no problem with blessing us and increasing us. But by the same token, you want us to be rich toward you. You want us to be thankful. You want us to be givers. And more especially, you want us to trust you with our soul. No one greater than you. No one can take care of us better than you. 
No one can heal us, deliver us, minister to us, open doors for us, make ways for us, bless us like you. Help us, Lord God, to be what you've called us to be. Let us not come to church and sit in the service and enjoy the singing and enjoy the word and go home unchanged, untouched going back the same way we came. Let us know, God, that you're speaking to our hearts for a reason. We're living in the last days. Time is running out. And you're calling for your people to straighten up, to get right with you, to do what you've called us to do. And we bless you today, God, for reminding us afresh that you love us and that you have your best in store for us. Now I pray that this word fall not on deaf ears, that some person who runs the risk of being a fool will hear what the Spirit of the living God has to say, that you'll change his or her heart that you'll change his or her direction, that you'll change his or her action. God, that we'll be thankful and grateful to you, that we'll learn nothing that we have is too good for you. Our greatest blessings, treasures, all, oh God, you're worthy. You're worthy. And God, we thank you because you loved us so much you sent your only begotten son, Jesus the Christ, to die on yonder's cross for my soul, for each one of our souls, to give us life eternal and more abundant. God, we thank you that even now you're teaching us how to trust you more depend upon you more to know there is nothing you cannot do if we lean and depend on you and God we give you praise glory and honor for what you shall do in Jesus his wonderful name we pray and the people of God said amen the doors of the church are open The doors of the church are open. Whoever you are, my brother, my sister, every now and then when a message like this goes forth, there's some who will hear and some who will not hear. But the question is, Did you hear what God has said? A little boy and his father were walking along the sandy beach <clears throat> right after a storm. And the little boy noticed that there were a whole lot of starfish and it washed up shore. And he called his daddy attention. And his daddy said, son, if, if we don't throw these starfish back into the water, they'll die here on the seashore. And so they reached down one by one and picked up the starfish and threw it back into the water. And as they continued to walk, Further up the beach, there were more starfish. And they picked up more and more and more. And the further up they went, it became so numerous that the little boy said, Daddy, it's too many of us, or too many of them for us to save. We can't save them all. What good is that? if we try to do any more because we can't save them all. 
And the daddy looked at him and said, Son, we might not be able to save them all, but the ones that we do save, it makes a difference. And my brothers, my sisters, all those who hear the word, it may not change everyone. But the ones who do hear and do receive the word of the Lord, it will make a change. It will make a difference. It will do what God desires it to do. And God is trying to save you from yourself. Little did the man know that his biggest problem was himself. And my question to you is, is your biggest problem you? You see, because when you really look at it, when you sit down and write out all of your problems, and you look at who the problems keep emanating from, you're going to realize it's you. And until you make a change, things cannot change for you. The doors of the church are open. Whoever you are, my brother, my sister, God wants you to change. And today is your day. Today is your day. God has so much in store for you. So many blessings with your name on it. But you've got to make a change. You've got to come to him and say, Lord, I surrender to you today. I thank you for giving me life and giving me the opportunity to know Jesus afresh and aright. You've got to make and take the opportunity to tell God you want God's best for your life. This is your opportunity. He asked the fool a question. When your soul is required of you this night, then whose will all those things be which thou has provided? You see, his only thought was himself. But if he were no longer here, who would get all the things he provided for himself? There's nothing more important than your soul. Nothing. The doors are open. Is there one? You come by Christian experience, by letter. If you've never been saved, never accepted Jesus, you can come by baptism, accepting the Lord Jesus as your Savior. It's your opportunity. It's your opportunity. 